Hello everyone, this is the great Lord and Master Asaran the Eternal, or the artist formerly known as the Great Roberto. Okay, this is going to be just, this should be quick, you know, but this is going to be, this is going to show where the zero is in the construction of the Vortex Math, math Sigil. And I'll, I'll also go over a couple of the finer points of Vortex Math. But if you want a really good description of uh, Vortex Math basics and advanced stuff, uh, Randy Powell has an excellent video series on that. And also Marco Roden. These two guys are the ones, as far as I know, they're the ones who pioneered this, this work. So I'm just really going over this more for my own benefit. But, but actually, and I, I do want to show how the zero is implied and used in the construction of this sigil here, which is the Vortex Math sigil. And now, when you look at it, you can't see zero. You know, and those guys, um, you know, Randy Powell and Marco Roden, they say zero is here at this cross point. And that may be true. That may be a zero point as well. I'm not going to deny that. But in the construction of this, the zero is implied by the position of the one right there. Because there's only one other number in the single digit code that has the right and authority to take the place of zero and have all the powers of zero, and that is nine. And nine is in the place where the zero is. See, because when you see the construction, if you were going to build this from nothing, from zero, <coughs> You acknowledge zero at the top, then you put one over on the side, and that's what I mean by the implication of zero is shown by the position of the one, because otherwise one would be up top, and then it would go around, and then of course it would throw this whole thing off at an angle, like that. But with zero here, you put acknowledge zero, then you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then nine falls into the zero position and closes the circle. Because if you didn't do that, it would have a big gap in the circle. Because there's one thing I want to add about the single digit code and zero. Um, zero must be acknowledged in the root system, but obviously zero is not going to show up in the uh, finished product necessarily. Because, and it doesn't, if you watch my Proof of God series, I show that. I show how once the grid the root system is um, shown through the number group, the, uh, the uh, basic numbers, well the finished product doesn't use zero anymore, it just uses one through nine. And I'll give you an example of what that means. It's like you got these four markers, you have these four markers here, and if I count them, let me use three, it's easier to hold. <laughs> you got these three markers here, if I count these, I'm not going to go 0, 1, 2 markers. No. I'm going to go 1 marker, 2 markers, and 3 markers. But everything that's not these markers is 0 in relation to these markers. That's why 0 doesn't necessarily have to be nothing, but you have to acknowledge it as nothing. And the same thing with this green marker. This green marker is one green marker. And these other two markers, in relation to this green marker, are not green markers. So there's zero green markers, but they are red and blue markers. That's how zero works. So zero isn't just zero. Zero is, zero is determined not only by one, but one can't exist without zero because the very edge of this marker, the demark point that... Um, that classifies this as a marker, and what we call as a marker is determined by the zero boundary of its edge. So once this marker stops being a marker, everything else in relation to it is zero. That's how that works. So you have to acknowledge it, and you do have to acknowledge it, but again, it's not going to always show up. So you have to sort of know when to use the zero and when to acknowledge it. And usually, as a general rule of thumb, that would be in root systems. Like in the tarot and the true tree of life, the reason why you get to use zero in the, in the position of Kether is because the tree of life is just a system. That's all. 
It's just a system, so you acknowledge zero there. Same thing with the pathways and the tree of life. You acknowledge zero for what would be a left because it's a system. You know? And you know, in the tree of life, you know, as I stated, it's just a, a piece of a greater, um, greater structure of geometry as a whole, so that zero will eventually be occupied by a nine somewhere else. So in the finished product, that zero will vanish eventually too. So the implication of zero is suggested by the position of the one. But, but, so, but now let me just get into some basic, you know, some people might be saying, what the fuck is vortex math? Well, vortex math is a system, and it basically works off every you know you keep uh, you keep making the numbers doubled. Okay, so in this case, you got one. Well, one doubled is two. Two doubled is four. Four doubled is eight. Eight doubled is sixteen, but sixteen reduces to seven. Okay, now here's where it gets really cool. Um, 16 doubled is 32, which makes 5. Uh, 32 doubled is 64, which reduces back to 1. In this loop here, you can see the blue lines, how I follow a pattern of lines. Well, that repeats to infinity. So you keep doubling, and it keeps doing that. This never, this never changes. It doesn't matter how, how high the numbers go. It will always follow this. And then, of course, you've got the 9, the 3, and the 6 that are outside of this. And even, uh, you know, even Randy Powell in his presentation, he says the same thing I say, basically, is that um, he calls it, you know, he, you know, he suggests that this is the, you know, indescribable force that, you know, some call Kundalini, Chi, you know, Tachyons, um, someone called it something else, anyway, everyone has a different name for it. And every, every time someone starts talking about it, they add their own name. Like, um, one person, I can't think of his name offhand, but he calls it Oregon. Um, that may, may have been William Roy, but I'm not sure. But someone, someone like that. They call it Oregon, they call it Tachyon, someone else calls it fucking something else, whatever. But it's basically Kundalini Chi. It's that, that mysterious energy that everything is made of. As I show in the true tree of life, and the beauty of the, the true tree of life is it shows, it validates this whole thing. Now, some other cool. Now, on the bottom here, you see number groups. Again, I want to keep this brief. You see number groups. You got a 1, 4, and a 7. You got a 2, 5, and an 8. And then you got 3, 6, and 9. So, what does that mean? How does that come up? Because if you notice, the lines don't correspond to that. It doesn't go 1, 4, 7. It doesn't go 1, 4, and 7. But it doesn't have to. Because if, if this is constructed, the term they use is forward motion and backward motion. So, we'll keep that. The three represents forward motion. So if you if your if your control is one, and you add three to one, well that becomes four. So one and four. If you add three to four, that becomes seven. So four, five, six, seven. Boom. And then if you add three to seven, it goes to ten. So it goes back to one. So this this uh, pattern of one, four, seven keeps repeating indefinitely too through the numbers if you're going forward and adding three. Now if you go backwards, if you add six, adding six makes it makes it go backwards. So now you got one and you add six, six plus one is seven. Uh, six plus seven is thirteen, which reduces to four. And then you keep going and then it keeps going backwards. So three represents as they call it forward motion. Six represents reverse motion. That's all. And that's the one of the groups. And then, of course, you got the 3, 6, and 9, and it does the same thing. And you see that here, the motion. Forward is 3, backward is 6. Now, another basic, again, if you want a more advanced presentation, Randy Powell does an excellent job. You see how the 9 and the 3 and 6 form a triangle in the middle? Well, one of the cool things is, if you take the 9 and the 3 angle, you see how it forms an angle like that? Well, everything, every number combination on that angle will uh, reduce to a 3. So if you take 1 and 2, that becomes 3. If you take 9 and 3, that, that's 12 and then reduces to 3. If you take 8 and 4, that again becomes 12 and reduces to 3. 7 and 5, same thing, that reduces to 3. 
Isn't that, isn't that wild? So everything that goes in the same angle as the 9, 3 will reduce to 3. Now it's the opposite for the 6. So once you employ the 6 angle, everything becomes a 6. 8 plus 7 is 15, which is 6. 9 plus 16 is 15, which is 6. 5 plus 1 is 6. And 4 plus 2 is 6. So everything on this angle will reduce to a 6. And this works, this vortex math sequence here works with every aspect of math. It, it, it works with even uh, multiplication, division, all that. Division's a little bit, it gets a little bit complex with division because you're dealing with some, you know, you're dealing with a uh, different aspect of math, but it does work. I'm, I'm not even going to touch that because, you know, Randy Powell gets into all that stuff. But So this is the vortex math and how... The main point of this video is this, I want to show how zero is implied in the construction of the vortex math sigil, that's it. But, um, and then you can see the numbers that come off the root numbers here, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. The string of numbers after each of those is just the uh, multiplication tables reduced, just like my, um, my Kundalini grid, it's the exact same thing. It's just that you got it laid out. So. So what, and, and what you'll notice, which goes, you know, I explained this in the proof of God, but you'll notice that one, you see how if you draw a line down the middle of this on the axis, every number that opposes each other uh, adds to 9. So 8 plus 1 is 9, 7 plus 2 is 9, obviously 6 plus 3 is 9, and then 5 plus 4 would be 8 equal 9. Again, the two halves cancel each other out to 9. And then the same thing with the uh, reduced multiplication tables. You know, one goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. But the eight tables reduced go backwards. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, then nine. Same thing with the twos and sevens. One goes one way, one goes the other way. Three, six, same thing. Four and five, the same thing. So it's like a mirror image of each other. To, in that, and then of course, as I shown in the proof of God series, you know, you start getting into the cube structure and and how the, the Kundalini grid. And it also explains why you know, the metric system is toxic. You know, because one thing, you know, again, I'll just be really, really brief with this, but the the uh, metric system is toxic because it doesn't acknowledge zero. But the thing about one, and this is a case where you can say. If Pythagoras was taken, if his work was translated accurately, you can say this is the case where he was definitively wrong by saying 10 is a perfect number, because it's not. 9 is. Because 10, no matter how you fractalize it out, if you go 10, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, million, whatever, you know, keep going, those numbers will only ever be 1. It'll never be anything else. Even in the case of 8, you see 8, if you take 8, if you take the number 8, out in multiples, it will continue a code that right here, you see it, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 9, and 0 will turn into 9 every time, you know what I mean, out to infinity, as I explain in other videos too, that's sort of like the reason why we use, um, and again, our, in, in, in the West here, in the U.S., our system is based off the 12 inch foot, with each inch, um, I say it's broken into eighths, and I say that just because it's simpler to understand. But really, what it is is the same thing as vortex math; it just doubles. So you got an inch, and you know, and then it, the next step after that is a half inch, and then a quarter inch, which is four, and then an eighth, which which is eighths, then sixteenths, then thirty seconds, and sixty fourths, and on and on that goes. So, so our math system corresponds to vortex math as well, where it keeps doubling. You, know, you got one inch and a half, and you know, as I just explained, and vortex math also does work the other way too. It works not only going forward, but it does work backwards if you go backwards. So if you got one, what's half of one? Point five. What's half of five? Point two five seven, and that keeps going backwards too. So it goes both ways. It's not just a one-way thing. This is a, this is the root code of this hollow fractal matrix we live in. Zero through nine is the key, as I say over and over again. And it, it, and it shows up everywhere, and it proves itself everywhere. The only thing about vo the vortex math presentation that, uh, 
sort of it gets lost um, on the videos with, with that Randy Powell. It's, it's excellent, it's good, but the only thing is, once he gets past this basic thing and he starts taking it into the toroid, uh, constructing the torus, just because of his, you know, the materials he had at the time of, of the presentation, kind of cock blocks him because you really need to see what's going on and then at that level he's just using papers and shit like that and notebooks to try to convey the message and it, it, it sort of you get lost in it and uh, but that's not that's just the fault of the technology even me you know my technology is primitive compared to what some people do I'm using a fucking dry erase board <laughs> you know there's people out there with the skills who could use and make an animated thing and make this you know really flashy if they wanted to but I don't have those skills yet so so this is it the zero in vortex math the implication of it so it would be like this you know you really this is what it's doing really you know this nine here like that zero nine fills in and it just it, the implication of that nine is suggested by the position of the one that's all so thank you and uh, namaste